in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed now, respectfully speaking, there are many believers who do all kinds of things in a place of prayer. And that's why we find out that in Africa, commendably so, we exert energy for hours doing what we know to be prayer. And yet the result versus the effort is almost one is to one million. The fervent and effectual prayer. That means there is a kind of prayer that is not effectual. Hmm. It is not just the volume of prayer that gives it power. <clears throat> It's not just the longevity of prayer necessarily that gives it power. It is the word compliancy of your prayer. Are we together? This is very important. Exceeding great and precious promises. What makes you believe that you are going to rise and be great and have the influence enough to serve the purposes of the kingdom? People like me. No, sir. That is not a scriptural basis. You are not speaking like a believer. A believer is one who has submitted to the word of God to guide your understanding and your approach in all things. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all that I command you this day. It says that thou shalt be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. So when you are praying for influence, you don't pray blindly and say, God, you know where I'm coming from. I'm tired of being small. That is a sincere prayer, but it's not a scriptural prayer. Listen to me. God is touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but is only moved by what he has said. Let me repeat it for your understanding. God is touched by the feelings of your infirmity. We call that compassion, but he's only moved by what he has said. Do not forget Genesis 21 verse 1. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said. He did unto Sarah as he had spoken. The Lord will only visit your ministry as he has said. He will only do unto you, man of God, as he has spoken. The Lord will only visit Taraba as he has said. So if you want a visitation, don't just say, God, come and visit us. What is the scriptural basis? Where has he said in scripture that he's coming to visit you? Is it not in your Bible that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth? Is Taraba not part of the earth? You can take that as a scripture. It is his desire that all men be saved and that they come into the knowledge of the truth. There are many believers who are not scripture based. They are not word compliant. And so you find out that our lives are inefficient. For instance, someone wants to rebuke a spirit and he says, you know I'm a man of God, don't play with me, go. You are joking. No. Demons have never, never been mandated to respect your personality. No. 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 They do not respect you. They respect who you represent. When men say there is a casting down, I say there is a lifting up, exceeding great and precious promises. Are we together now? Yes. I arise and I shine for my light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Exceeding great and precious promises. I shall not die but live and declare the blessings of the Lord. Nothing dies in my hands. Why? Because the Bible says I am blessed. The works of my hands are blessed. Blessed in the city, blessed in the country. Therefore, everything I touch is blessed. How do I know I am a blessing and not a curse? 
because in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2 and 3 he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed so when you say you are blessed it's not because you are giving people money or doing charity that is not why you are blessed you are blessed because there is a force behind you upon the scripture that you are standing in that compels the world to acknowledge you as blessed of the Lord hallelujah why do I know that every time I speak to people they will be blessed and changed because it is written I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your adversary your enemies will not be able to gain say or resist he says my heart is indicting a good matter yea I speak of excellent things my tongue is as a pen of a ready writer that means I do not speak and waste the times of people no in my speaking is life in my speaking is healing it is not just because I have studied by the privilege of God's grace I've studied and continue to study to make myself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but like Paul will say, I am what I am by the grace of God. Yet this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all. But that it is still credited to his grace. Can I tell you, your life becomes invincible when you surround yourself with the word exceeding great and precious promises. If you send me a prophetic word and say, Apostle Joshua Selman, I saw you dying. It doesn't matter whether you are right or wrong. I will first thank you for being honest and loving towards me. And then I will go to sleep. You need to know the scripture's death has to pass before it reaches me. Mm -mm. I build my life with the word. Garrisons upon garrisons. A system of defense around me. Is it not in your Bible? I lay me down and I slept some tree. I say I waked for the Lord sustains me so it is only when the Lord refuses to sustain me that I will not wake up but the keeper of Israel is in your Bible he does not sleep two of us cannot be awake when I am done walking I will sleep because the keeper has decided that he does not sleep nor slumber and the Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep are you learning now Taraba listen to me let me give you an assignment tonight as we prepare even if i don't have the time to say anything to you and we share the grace from here i will still live satisfied stop just being traditional or cultural or just humane you have to switch to become scriptural if you want to be victorious don't just say our people said it no your people don't have the power to drive demons respectfully speaking I'm not trying to downplay on culture I believe in culture and all of that I'm teaching you how to be victorious hallelujah I believe with all my heart that I will serve the purposes of God from nation to nation from place to place blessing him because he has made me a blessing I have you have not chosen me I have chosen you John 15 16 and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain hear me music ministers when you stand to sing more than a great voice you must have a scripture what is the basis of your believing you will come and bless the people I think they like my voice you will only be given a special number what translates a special number to become life is that there is a scriptural understanding so men like Don Moen can come and stand in front of you and say God will make a way where there seems to be no way he walks in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my God only closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way do you know why the songs of these men don't die you don't find at leaping and shouting but the word of God stops it from dying because all they sing is scripture and the life within the word is invested in the songs and it remains those songs were 
were sung before many people some of our children were born and it still remains eternal when your life becomes garrison let me say it for one last time with scripture everything about your life how do you know your children will not become um some some wayward children what is the basis i am training them well wrong no daddy no mommy that is not what some of the most disciplined families have sadly produced some children that are very disturbing there must be a scripture i and the children the lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders in israel my children are great and they are taught of the lord great is their peace that becomes your confession can i tell you the truth when your life becomes governed by scripture you get up in the morning and you want to leave what gives you a guarantee that you are returning back in peace in this wicked world your going out is blessed is it not in your bible and your coming in is blessed the reason why we walk victorious is that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises I expect men to bless me every day I expect men to favor me every day because I have become Beulah and Hephzibah it is true I truly believe this with all my heart I believe that the favor of God is upon my life why because the Bible says that he has surrounded us with favor as with a shield and I know what it is able to do what is your life built upon is it built on sand or is built on the rock man of God beyond having a vision go and get scripture for your ministry don't tell people I will excel because I had a vision it's too small a reason go and find a scriptural basis then let your vision support it what makes you believe people will come to hear you I think I'm a sincere person no sir I think I can preach you're right but no sir I think I'm honest no sir I think I'm from Taraba no sir and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men to myself hallelujah now we're going to pray a few minutes and then we'll step into that impartation please do not forget what you have learned tonight as simple and as basic as it is if you have been born again to win you must understand these four factors they are not all there are many more but these are foundational truths that your faith must be anchored upon number one the almightiness of God number two the fact that you are a partaker of his divine nature one with Christ together with Christ exalted with Christ is a spiritual reality above principalities and powers and all kinds of things I remember years ago when people started coming with charms sometimes they will repent when they repent maybe families that serve idols and they don't know what to do with some of these charms they now suggest that they should bring it and come and drop it let me help them and pray over it so that they go in peace and I now said, can you imagine something that has been killing people for decades before they were born? They now carry it and come and drop it at their apostle. <laughs> they drop those things there and leave. Know what to do with it there. You and God, you said God sent you. So, I mean, we're tired of this thing killing us. We've repented, so we cannot see God. But since you say you are close to him, help us and know what to do with this chance. You know how many of those things I've held with my hand? There are things you cannot fake. No. It is only when we get to heaven we will know the amounts of poisons we have eaten. The shrines that have carried our names on a daily basis. Let him go down. Let him fail. But thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Always. 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 There have been times I've been wanting to take trips and sincere people loving people they call and say apostle please don't go i am a prophet and i've had a revelation i saw a ghastly motor accident and i saw you dead and they were not lying that was the plan of the enemy but what then is the excellency of dominion i congratulate them for seeing and i salute their sincerity and compassion but you see there is no business 
between an aircraft and an angry crocodile in the water they have no meeting point an aircraft is far passing the sea it is only when you come to that domain that you become a victim of that crocodile have you ever seen a pilot saying we have an issue with the cry of crocodiles they are hungry and so will not be able to pass the Mediterranean there are times where you travel across the globe 90% of your trip is across the sea with sharks and whales yet those in the flight do not even know it has not stopped the existence of the shark nor did it stop their hunger you were only elevated to a plane far beyond their reach Do you believe this? Yes. So if someone calls you and says, Ah, I saw your name in a shrine. Oh. You start praying for the salvation of the harbalist because he has put himself in trouble. He said, Why do you want to do this to your children? Your children are longing for a father. My assignment is for you to repent and change. Who gave you this contract that you want to end your life for no reason? Is it not in your Bible that he suffered no man to do them wrong? He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. You see, you can quote that scripture and nothing happens. But when your life becomes submitted to the word, I remind you of Genesis 21.1. The Lord will only visit you as he has said. He will only do unto you. As he has spoken one more time the Lord will only visit you as he has said he will only do unto you as he has spoken man of God expect visitations because he has said it expect a performance because he has spoken it rise up on your feet as we pray just give us two prayer points and then I'll speak over our lives whether you are outside inside following online now is the time where your spirit becomes enlarged and open ready to receive one prayer point father I decree and declare and I ask in the name of Jesus that my life becomes a manifestation of the victory that is in Christ lift your voice and begin to pray that my life becomes a manifestation and those who are watching from your various homes watching by way of television participate in the prayer watching by way of internet make sure you are praying that my life becomes a manifestation North East pray Taraba pray believers pray in the name of Jesus that my life becomes a manifestation of the victory that is in Christ this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith this is the victory that overcomes principalities and powers is someone praying I decree and declare that I begin to walk in the experience of eternal life the experience of the life of God that I have received in the name of Jesus I decree in the name of Jesus I declare hallelujah hallelujah final prayer point I will add everything in one father that which you had in store for me in the womb of prophecy as you put this conference to pass I'm ready to receive it now is it the healing is it the impartation is it the direction as it has come that which God has in store for you I'd like you to open your mouth and aggressively pray in the next one minute go ahead and pray that which you have for my church my ministry my business the territory the government families politicians captains of industry academicians the institutions of learning within this region in the name of Jesus now we are ready to receive 
the bible says he that told you have asked for nothing it says ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full is it a greater grace for ministry go ahead and ask what things soever ye desire it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hallelujah 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 now you have prayed it's my turn to pray for you every time God wants to help men he sends men every time Satan wants to destroy men he sends men every time the season in a man's life is about to change he sends men every time God wants to restore he sends men in John chapter 5 when Jesus met the man at Bethesda and said why are you in this condition his only request is I have no man I have no man I know what to do but I have no man and something that can happen in one moment was prolonged for 38 years not because the river dried up I have no man hallelujah there were many widows in Zarephath but to none was Elijah sent the day of joy in a man's life is the day he encounters the grace sent to him not the grace available the grace sent the grace sent the grace sent I believe with all my heart that standing in partnership with the grace upon his lordship and the corporate anointing within this place that there will be a distribution of possibilities that men will access graces we need this not just for our sake not just for the sake of saying I am anointed I am a great man but for the sake of God and the sake of his sheep are we together now praise the name of the Lord now let me start tonight by rebuking the operation of spirits it will be a quick walk I don't intend to stretch us longer than necessary we have been patiently waiting many of us have stood all the way outside and around and it's not my intention to stretch us longer than necessary but let me back up please don't be distracted no moving around have your attention wrapped and fixed on Jesus as you receive yeah spirits are real they manipulate men they have a singular assignment of thwarting the purposes of God and as you may have learned there are three bases three scriptural bases for any advantage that Satan may have over men number one is called covenants number two is called ignorance number three is called disobedience these are the only platforms upon which Satan is able to afflict the saints let me repeat it one last time for your knowledge number one covenants now the danger with covenants is that they have a transgenerational implication you don't have to be there but except it is being superimposed by the mystery of the blood and mercy it will work covenants number two ignorance number three disobedience we judge disobedience in this kingdom only when our obedience is complete every time God wants to judge disobedience he gives you a room to obey and for these three reasons there are many people here who are under all kinds of satanic oppressions no wonder the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions if you understand what deliverance is from a scriptural basis you are not adding to what Christ has done deliverance is a spiritual strategy where the victory that has been wrought in Christ is established experientially in the life of the believer are we together and there are two levels of deliverance as taught in scripture number one there is the casting away through the power of the word and the blood the spirit influences 
that attach themselves to men and attach themselves to situations the second dimension is deliverance through transformation where you now bring the word of God and reprogram the understanding of that person so that through ignorance he does not keep the door of his heart open and then number three if you may add is called the discipline of conformity I have done a teaching complete deliverance is based on these three things number one casting out the spirit influences that have now plagued men just because Jesus died and gave you victory does not mean you know by now that it automatically you're receiving Jesus gives you access you're walking in obedience makes it your experience the same cross that set you free from sin set you free from sickness set you free from demons why do we still go to hospitals today because we are still growing in faith and the administration of eternal life is still being progressive you are not embarrassed as a christian when you go to the hospital you shouldn't be embarrassed when demons are casted out they are not casted out because you are possessed you don't have to be possessed to be free from spirits if they can manipulate your mind at the realm of the mind they still need to be casted out I needed to say this as a basis because there are many people who have been lied to and trapped down through ignorance. No. Jesus looks at Peter, a man who he's personally mentoring and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Satan did not fear the presence of Jesus. Even while Jesus was praying, anointed with the Holy Ghost, praying in the wilderness, the Bible says Satan took him to an exceeding high mountain. So what exactly is Satan afraid of? The realm of the spirit works upon a legal system. Just because it is finished with Christ does not mean it is a reality in your life. It takes faith and the operation of your understanding to make it true. Forever, O oh Lord, is said, thy word is settled. Where? Not in your life, in heaven. It takes faith to make it settled in your life. So your assignment is that let it be done in earth as it is done in heaven. Do you believe now? So let's pray. I needed to say this so that your hearts be open to receive. There is a false way of approaching things of deliverance where it becomes a consistent warfare from a mindset of defeat. Warfare for the believer has to do with establishing victory, not creating it. Are we together? The victory has been wrought in Christ right from the foundations of the earth. The lamb was slain. However, Jesus had to come and die in time to make it a reality. That reality of the lamb being slain did not save anyone. It is the death, the acting out of that death on the cross experientially that brought us salvation. There are many people whose hearts will not be open to be free from the influence of demon spirits. It is clear from their life that there are various levels of spiritual influences. So don't generalize when you see people talk about deliverance. Don't just generalize because perhaps respectfully, maybe you had a bad experience because of an ignorant approach to it. Are we together? Just because it was inaccurately approached does not mean that it cannot be doctrinally approached from the basis of scripture producing victory are you ready to receive now that is also true for healing that is also true for all manifestations of the spirit your heart must be open to embrace and to receive the entire counsel of God so I'm going to pray right now believe me there are people whose lives and destinies are under all kinds of yokes and I want to pray now I'm going to request that you shout the name Jesus that is only a prophetic action to help you release your faith as I pray and while we shout that name please ushers let's work with time and for those who are not ushers please if someone is under the anointing close to you please do me the favor of helping just to bring them out if I ask you to do like I'll do now so that we can pray and minister to them hallelujah and then very quickly we'll pray for the sick do the impartation and we're done for tonight i promise you that i will keep to time and not stretch you beyond necessary thank you by the way for your patience so far but i believe this is why you came hallelujah are you ready now thank you jesus after a lady shouts right now under the anointing 
I will begin to pray for the sick. This is the instruction God has given me. There will be a lady shout loud under the anointing. Bring the lady out. Now I'm ready to pray. Lift your hands. Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known within the glory of the risen Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known within the glory of the risen Lord. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that is not of the Christ, that has tied down lives, tied down destinies, held down people, in the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, I decree and declare that those devils leave you now. Are you ready at the count of three? Shout that name. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Be delivered now. I release you now. Bring them out. I release you now. Help that lady. Please help that lady. I release you now. The devils of ancestry, operations of covenants, we come by the blood of the Lamb. Please bring them out very quickly. In the name of Jesus, let them go now. Release their destinies now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. From every oppression, my Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I decree and declare, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against you, it has been nailed to his cross. Therefore, I administer life and deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. We are still praying. Every family here that has been under siege, that people don't rise, people don't excel. I don't know where you are. But in the name of Jesus, let that fire rest upon you now. I release those families now. Bring them out. I release those families now. Whether in Taraba, whether in Yobe, whether in Plateau State, in Adamawa State, all across the Northeast, the North Central, the Northwest, I come in the name of Jesus here at Peniel 2023. We decree and declare liberty by the Spirit. 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 Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit delay. I don't know whose life has been delayed and whose family has been delayed. In the name of Jesus, that chain of delay right now be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Delay, 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 be broken. Hallelujah. Maybe a few women or a few ladies can volunteer and just come and help our sisters here, the choir or something. You are not singing again. So some of you can volunteer 
just to come and help them so that they are not scattered or exposed around you may also help with veils if you have some please so that if you need to cover some of them you may do that we're praying now we have to do that which we do within the confines of modesty and decency we're praying in the name of Jesus I'm hearing in my spirit salvation of the male child there are families where men do not rise I don't know where you are but in the name of Jesus in the name that is above all names every family where men are tied down be released now 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 in the name of Jesus spirits that cause barrenness leave God's people now I command fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ the spirits of untimely death I'm hearing it in my spirit families that keep losing loved ones patterns of death that spirit of death oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory here at Peniel we come as life-giving spirits death lose your power now death lose your power now death lose your power now lose your power now In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 